Okay, perfect. And I have your spelling here down on my notes. So, Vincent, can you tell me a little bit about, let's start back in, I think it was October of 2022. Um, for the Mead family, can you kind of tell me how this all got started? That's right. The Dan and Jennifer Mead, they trusted the Rockford Public School District with their daughter, their middle school daughter, and they found out that Rockford Public Schools had been concealing important information about their daughter from them. Ooh. They were in regular communication with school district employees. Nobody told them that their daughter, uh, that the school district had started using a masculine name and male pronouns for their daughter, treating her as a boy while she was at school, while uh, not telling the Meads what was going on. And they just felt totally betrayed by what the school district had done here. And it's not just about their feelings, though. It's about the Constitution. The school district's actions violated their rights under the U.S. Constitution to direct their their uh, daughter's upbringing, education, and health care. Absolutely. To, absolutely. To your guys' understanding, what did the school district have a a duty to tell the uh, to tell the B family? without the Mead family inquiring about the change or about, you know, the changes surrounding their daughter's name change and uh, masculine pronouns. Once the school district took affirmative steps in their daughter's life, the school district needed to tell them Rockford public schools has a policy that you can't even give a kid an over the counter medicine, like uh, Advil without getting the parents permission. Um, so in a situation like this, the school district shouldn't have been engaging in this controversial intervention in this girl's life without informing the parents. And in fact, while affirmatively concealing the fact from the parents, changing records so they wouldn't find out about it, those sorts of things. I mean, kids always do better when parents are involved in their lives. And we know from scientific evidence that we've cited in the complaint that when dealing with these sorts of issues, gender issues, kids do better when their parents are involved. It's just common sense, but science backs it up. Absolutely. And so um, tell me a little bit about that interaction the Meads had with the district when they asked them to um, comply with their wishes and to refrain from using uh, that masculine name and those male pronouns. The district told them that, and this was a conversation with the principal, the district via the principal told them that this was the district's policy, that they were going to keep doing it and that he couldn't guarantee that it would not happen again and that it would not be concealed from them again. So again, this was just a total breakdown in the trust that the Meads had placed in the school district, that they think, like most parents, that when their kid is at school, they're going to know what's going on and the school's not going to keep information from them. And that, that concealing of the information is the constitutional violation here. And how, and I, I know I see it right here, but how did the parents, how did the Meads uh, find out that this was happening? Dan Mead, the father, was uh, visiting a, one, a school employee in a meeting about their daughter's education. And he was sent a document home that one of the, one section of the document referred to a, a boy with a different name and the Meads thought that was, was an accident and they they emailed that school employee and said hey I think we got somebody else's paperwork and it turned out that no that that was how the school was treating their daughter at school as a boy and that that employee had been altering the paperwork just failed to delete this one reference to the boy's name that the school had been using for her so it was it was really an inadvertent revelation of deliberate concealing of this information from the Meads. Uh, can you talk about damages that are being sought from the district? I see sure, it this, down here at the end. Th this case is about the constitutional violation that the district's engaged in of the parental rights. But to remedy that constitutional violation, the Meads have sought some damages and they had to pull their daughter from the school district because of this breakdown in trust. And it's the damages are related to costs uh, from pulling their daughter from the school district and homeschooling her, which is where she is right now. But it's about their viol the violation of their parental rights, which led to those damages caused by the school district. Absolutely. Where do you guys go from here? This has been filed with the um, uh, right here, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Michigan Southern Division. That's right. It's filed in the uh, federal courthouse there in Grand Rapids. 
Um, the district will have give or take a month until they have to respond. And we'll go from there once we hear from the district about their response. The district says that they have not received paperwork yet. Is that in transit or how does that work? That's just the normal process at the beginning of the lawsuit. It has to be personally served on the appropriate district officials at the beginning of the lawsuit. And that's in process right now. Okay. It's filed perfect. the courthouse and then served on the district. Perfect. Is there anything else the Meads kind of want to, you know, get out there of, you know, their case, what they want the public to know, what you guys want the public to know? They want to make sure that other parents don't have to go through what they went through, this sort of betrayed trust that, that really prevented them from coming alongside and helping their daughter in a moment of great vulnerability. So they want other parents to be able to help their kids in similar situations. Absolutely. Anything else? I think I have really all the topics I wanted to hit. No, I think you got it. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much. And then I have I have Hattie's um, email. So if you know anything else comes of this, would love to, you know, talk with you guys 